Now on a Wednesday morning, Dr. Wendy Anderson Willis from the Pediatrician at Nationwide Children's Hospital is with us this morning. We're going to talk about ADHD. Okay. A lot of kids, are more than ever, are being diagnosed with this. How prevalent is that? We think about 8% of our kids have it. Only 8. So mm -hmm. why are we hearing more and more about it? Well, I think we know more about it. Okay. Parents know more about it. The teachers are aware. Doctors are testing for it. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of it. Well, then is the label a default? Do people just default to that because they're not able no. to cope with hyperactive children? Because I'm hearing more and more teachers talk about it. Well, I think it can be pretty difficult for that child and maybe even for some of the other children in the classroom when there's a child who does have trouble focusing. Okay. So it can be a pretty difficult situation. They can become disruptive and problematic? Well, sometimes they talk out of turn, sometimes they get out of their seat, they're fidgeting, they're you know, connecting with other kids when it's time to be quiet, when it's time to focus, and so it can be really a, a difficult situation in the class. So then the struggle. Do you or don't you medicate those children? Well, sometimes we do. Uh -huh. And the reason that we do is because parents, children, often get to the point where they're frustrated. That child who they know is smart is not performing well in school. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do behavioral therapy and that can be really, really helpful for many of our children. But what can be even more helpful is sometimes medication. Mm -hmm. So when we use medication in about 80 to 90 percent of our kids, we're getting really great results. If they're in preschool, if they're in kindergarten, I mean, they're, they're little ones. Do you see the, see the signs then, and is that too young to actually offer up medication? You know, we see the, see the signs then. Parents who know about this, the parent may have it themselves, the husband may have it, they may have older children with it, they see the signs, but we don't really treat our younger children, mm -hmm. not until they're school age. Okay. So that preschooler, we may do behavioral therapy, we may, you know, say, hey, if there's a really severe case of this, we're going to send you on to psychiatry, but the average pediatrician is not going to treat below age five. Okay. So you brought that up, so it is genetic? It's inherited? Well, there are many times that we do see parents and children okay. with this. Yes, really? absolutely. Well, what would be the side effects? So if we do make that decision, your child does need medication, what would you be concerned about? So there's some side effects that we see almost every in every case. When we use stimulant medicines like Adderall, we may see a child who has difficulty sleeping at night. So because of them being on amphetamines, it can be difficult to kind of fall asleep after all that. Mm -hmm. So we may say, hey, we need to pull back on the medicine. We need to get the medicine earlier. We need to, you know, maybe use something like melatonin or clonidine or some other medication at night to help the child sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then the appetite is an issue. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, appetite. So we may say, can you, can you eat first? A huge breakfast. I know how convenient for everybody, but can you eat first and then take the medicine and then later on in the evening when a child is off the medicine and their appetite comes back, can you let them eat a later dinner? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Is this something that you, as you age, you kind of grow out of or is once you're on the medication you should plan for this for, for life? Well, some children take medication throughout childhood, um, and sometimes kids get to the point where they can manage their symptoms a little bit better. They can, you know, not get up out of their seats. They can pay attention a little more in school. They can set up things so that they have notes written and they have um, ways to get their homework instead of forgetting their homework and forgetting their books. They can have a little system in place that works a little bit better for them. So some children can um, get off medication and work through it in other ways. Um, you sound like you're a proponent, that you believe that this is a really effective way. And is that the message you would give parents? Well, I say try everything you want to try first. Okay. You know, if you want to try therapy, great. But what I've seen is this. I get the parents who are frustrated, the kids who are frustrated, they're just not doing well in school, they're being kicked out of school, they're not performing well, they're failing in school, and we're kind of the last resort. So when they come to me and the only thing that I have that can make a change in this child's life is medication, I'm going to use it. Absolutely. And give some people peace of mind. I think that's the key. That's terrific to know that there is an outlet. Well, and to let that smart kid shine. Exactly. You know, yeah. Let him be able to focus oh, yeah. and let him shine. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wendy, we appreciate it. Sure. Thank, Thank you, you so here. much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Well, it's a wild Wednesday. We're over here. It's a wild Wednesday this morning on Good Day Columbus. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Jack Hanna himself Yay! live at the Columbus Zoo. But first, time for a Good Day giveaway.